Hey, Walter Sorrells back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, we'll be making a tool that'll help you make grooves in knives and swords. Many kinds of swords and knives have a groove cut in them to lighten the blade. Japanese swords are no different. In Western swords, this groove is referred to as a fuller. On a Japanese sword, it's known as a he or a bow he. Today, we'll be making a tool for sanding out this groove. Mine will be used for Japanese swords, but the exact same tool could be used just as easily for Western swords and knives as well. Now, the bow he is initially scraped out with a little cutting tool or cut out with a scraping tool. Um, anyway, I've shown uh, that tool in another video that I did a long, long time ago. Uh, but that tool leaves a fairly rough little gully that has to be sanded out to reach its final smooth surface. You can do this by uh, using fairly precisely contoured abrasive stones, or you can do it by wrapping sandpaper around a dowel. In either case, it's a really fiddly, annoying, slow, unpleasant task, and it just really is brutal on your fingers. It leaves blisters, you know, your fingers get sore. It just really sucks to do. So I decided to come up with a tool that would make the job a little bit easier. Now, incidentally, I'll be putting out a video in the next week or so that shows the process of cutting the bohe, that groove, both uh, using the sanding tool that I'm gonna be making today and a cutting tool that I made many, many years ago. Uh, I'll link to, the, uh, to that video in the cards and the description as soon as it goes live. Here's the basic design done in Fusion 360, a CAD CAM program. Now, I have a CNC machine, so I could go straight from here to the CNC machine if I wanted to, but often doing one-off projects on a CNC is a hell of a lot slower than just doing it manually. So I'll be doing most of the job on a mill with some help from a tool room lathe. But look, you could still do this whole project with much, much simpler tools if you wanted to. The basic idea is that you have a cylindrical form on the bottom of this tool with a radius that matches the radius of the groove that you've cut into the sword. A piece of sandpaper loops over it and that's what sands out the groove. The whole key to this thing is that you have a long strip of sandpaper and you can keep moving it so that fresh abrasive is in contact with the sword. Also, this form is replaceable. You can make multiples of them so that you can do larger and smaller radii if you want to do different sizes of grooves. In this case, it's a half inch radius, but for a western sword, you might want something much larger, an inch or maybe even more, and this tool will accommodate that. The tool has a handle on the rear for you to push and sort of steer the thing, and then there's a little shelf on the front to rest your offhand on so you can apply maximum pressure with minimum effort. All right, let's get rolling. The heart of the tool is a small body, which I'm milling from aluminum. It's just a half inch piece that I chop up and then mill to size. You could just as easily do this with a handsaw and a file. Doing it this way keeps everything nice and square, but honestly not that critical. Next, I'll use a half inch ball end mill to mill a couple of radius slots along the side of the tool body. You could do this with a round file if you're not using a mill. Next, I'll spot and drill holes with a 7 32 inch drill in preparation for tapping a couple of 632 screws. Though these are through holes, I actually drill them from both sides. The reason for this is that if a skinny drill like this wanders just the least little bit, which it's almost inevitably going to do, the holes on the opposite side would fail to line up properly and they'll screw the whole thing up. By the way, if you're interested in doing this project yourself, I'll be posting detailed plans for the build on my Patreon page. They have all the critical dimensions, thread sizes, all that good stuff. Plans are available to all my Patreon supporters, no matter what pledge level you're at. 
As always, I want to offer a big thanks to my Patreon supporters who've helped make all these videos possible. Check out the link in the cards or the description to a link to Patreon where you can help out the channel and find plans for tons of the projects that I've made over the years. Now I'll tap those holes using a hand drill. For little bitty holes, I find this easier than most of the alternatives. I have a tapping head for my mill, but personally I find this a little easier. Now I'm setting up to drill a hole for the handle to thread into. The handle will be set at 15 degrees. If you don't have it set at an angle, there's no room to get your fingers underneath it and you'll be scraping along on the sword the whole time. So I'll be drilling with a quarter inch drill in preparation for tapping 5 16 18 threads. Before I do that though, I'll mill a little half inch pocket. That kills two birds with one stone. First, the drill will have a flat surface to drill into, and second, the handle shank will seat nice and tight to the tool body by having a flat to engage. A point about all this drilling, I'm being cute and I'm milling out various pockets here with end mills and all this stuff, but again, you could just as easily drill them using much less complicated tools and they'd still work just fine. Now I'll tap the hole in place on the mill. I'm using a little trick here. Without resetting the position of the mill, I'll chuck up this old tap in the mill, then feed the point down into the recess on the tap handle, and that'll keep everything aligned perfectly, and you won't be running those threads off axis. Now I'll just keep a little pressure on the drill handle and feed the tap in. This is a little awkward if, like me, you don't have three hands, but it works. Now I'll mill off the top of a piece of half inch nylon rod which will act as the sanding form. I'm using nylon because it's very durable but relatively soft. I don't want any sort of material here that might gouge up a multi-thousand dollar sword if the tool slips. Also, having a little give helps the sandpaper maintain even contact with the groove. Then a couple of holes that mate to the tool body. I'll start by milling a quarter inch pocket for the cap thread mounting screw to fit into. Then a clearance hole. And this is how it mounts to the tool. I'll also mill a flat onto two more pieces of nylon rod. Those will be used to pinch the sandpaper into place on the tool body. These rods will be held on with a rubber band so I'll need to mill a second little slot down the center that the rubber bands can seat onto. Now it's time to make the hand rest for the top of the tool. You could make this out of wood or plastic or metal, doesn't really matter, but I'm just using a scrap piece of micarta. Milled to fit the length of the tool body and pockets drilled the exact same way that I did the nylon sanding form. Then holes. Now it's time to make the handle. I'll be doing this on a lathe, but that's not necessary. You could use a 5 16 inch rod for the handle and just thread it by hand with a threading die. The stock I'm using is 303 stainless, which I'll turn down to 310 thousandths.
Next, I'm using a single point tool to cut 18 pitch threads. Checking to make sure it threads okay. And at the end, I'll use a parting tool to turn a short relief so that the handle can thread flush down on the mating pocket of the tool body. I'll also make a grip for the handle out of HDPE rod. Wood would be fine here too. I'm just using plastic because it's less likely to split. Again, I'll use my lathe. Here I'm just drilling the rod out. A lathe is not necessary, of course. You could do this with a drill press or even a hand drill. Having the lathe just makes it easier to maintain concentricity of that hole. After that, I'll taper the grip. My wood lathe is currently out of commission. That'd probably be the easiest way to do it, so I tapered it on my belt grinder. You could file it, plane it, whatever. Now let's put it all together. I'll use thread locker on the handle so it doesn't unscrew while you're using it. A handful of 632 cap screws to assemble. And then the handpiece or grip mounts onto the handle. So as I said, the idea here is that you can cut a long strip of sandpaper and just keep feeding it through as the abrasive wears away. The sandpaper sits under the little nylon clamps, which, were held in, which are held in place by a rubber band. Now, I'm not really sold on this clamping method right now. It may work just fine with rubber bands only, no nylon clamps necessary. But for now, that's how I've got it rigged, and we'll see how it works out. Like I said, I hate cutting these grooves because of the sanding mainly, which is just brutal on your hands. So let's see if this tool works the way that I hope it will. I'll be running this test on an old Tonto that I made many, many years ago. It's just been hanging on my wall. There's some kind of flaw in it. I can't even find it anymore, but it'll be a good little test bed for seeing how this thing works. So I'll cut a test groove in it using a scraper. I'm not trying to make it a final thing. It's not supposed to look good. All we're doing is a test. But this is the real test, and that's how efficiently does the tool clean this groove out. You can see in this sequence of close-ups that you've got a lot of chatter marks from the original scraping. Now, after a couple minutes with this tool, these horizontal chatter marks are almost all gone. And then, just a minute or two more, and this section's pretty well cleaned up. Obviously, again, not intended to be perfect, but an excellent test run. So anything that involves hand sanding is slow and a little tedious, but that said, it's unbelievable how much easier and more pleasant this makes the job. Big win. Like I said, I've got another video coming out in the next week or so where I'll take you through this whole process of cutting a groove on this sword. Thanks for watching, guys. If you feel like you got something out of this video, don't forget to subscribe. Also, click on the link to Patreon for a great way to give back to the channel. Plus, check me out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Links in the description. 
If you want something sharp and pointy, maybe a gift for yourself or one of the cooler people in your life, check out my Tactics Armory website and pick up one of our tactical or outdoor knives. And finally, if you want to learn to make hamons or Japanese swords, check out waltersorrelsblades.com where you can find videos about how I make hamons as well as forging, mounting, polishing, and fittings for Japanese swords. Thanks and see you soon!